One of the most outstanding monarchs of the Achaemenid Empire, Xerxes I made a lasting impression on the political and cultural landscape of his time. He was forever remembered in history for his military campaign, which became one of the most remarkable episodes of the Greco-Persian Wars. This video will tell us more about this monarch's life and achievements. Xerxes was born around 515 BC, the son of Darius the Great, who ruled the Persian Empire from 522 to 486 BC. Atosa, his mother, was the daughter of Cyrus the Great, the founder of the Achaemenid Empire. This powerful bloodline gave Xerxes royal prominence from birth, as his family was directly connected to the empire's history and foundation. Two decades before Xerxes was born, his father, Darius, had launched an attempt to expand the Persian Empire into Greece, but the Persian attempt in Greece resulted in a major defeat by the Greek forces at the Battle of Marathon, fought in 490 BC. This meant that Darius was unable to launch a new offensive, having died in 486 BC. Darius had appointed Xerxes as his successor to the Persian throne prior to his death, even though he was not the family's eldest son. His half-brother Artabazan had been born before Darius became king. However, as his mother was a commoner, Artabazan was not appointed successor, and Xerxes was instead recognized as having a more solid claim to the throne. Xerxes was thus crowned and took over his father's throne between October and December of 486 BC, at the age of about 32. He was married to Princess Amistris, daughter of Otanis. Their children included Darius, Hystaspes, and Artaxerxes I. As soon as he was crowned, Xerxes had the heavy burden not only of leading the Persian Empire, but also of expanding it towards Greece. He did this by engaging in one of the greatest military campaigns in history, gathering a massive army, regarded as the largest and best equipped at the time, according to Herodotus. The purpose of Xerxes was clear, to fulfill the mission that his father had not accomplished, the conquest of Greece. First, he had to tackle a few other issues that his father had left in his wake. Among these was suppressing a revolt in Egypt that his father had not managed to settle. This uprising was mainly caused by high taxes and the deportation of craftsmen to build the Persian royal palaces. Xerxes deployed a large army in his first military campaign as king, and succeeded in bringing the revolt in Egypt under control in January 484 BC. He later appointed his brother Achaemenes as the new satrap of Egypt. Another uprising broke out in Babylon soon after. Prior to these insurgencies, Babylon enjoyed a special standing in the Persian Empire. Xerxes' predecessors were even called by the title King of Babylon, indicating that they regarded Babylon as a special and, in turn, part of the Persian Empire. But Xerxes was defiant and severed the relations that had been established with the Babylonians by his father and grandfather. Not wanting to be known as the King of Babylon, he called himself the King of the Persians and the Medes, and subordinated everyone to his rule. This may have been one of the main reasons for the Babylonian revolts in 484 BC. However, during a long siege, Xerxes succeeded in conquering the city and ordered its walls to be destroyed. Also as punishment, he damaged several temples in Babylon and melted down Marduk's golden statue, a major Babylonian deity. With the Persian Empire now relatively peaceful, Xerxes focused on what his father had failed to achieve, conquering Greece. He carried out his four-year preparations and managed to gather a large number of men along with enough supplies and weapons. In the spring of 480 BC, Xerxes departed with a huge fleet and an army that Herodotus estimated to be made up of around a million men. It also included an elite detachment known as the Immortals, who totaled 10,000 warriors. They left Sardis and made their way through the Thermopylae Pass on the east coast. Xerxes had a crucial part to play in the Battle of Thermopylae as the leader of the Persian army. His move to invade Greece and his leading hand brought the Persian army to mainland Greece. He also had a powerful army and resources at his disposal, meaning he could seriously challenge the Greek city-states. 
but his ancestors also had an indirect impact on the battle itself. Xerxes greatly underestimated the Greek warrior's determination and resilience at Thermopylae, prompting him to dispatch a large number of his army to try and subdue this small Greek force. This provided the Greeks under the command of Leonidas I with an opportunity to mount an effective resistance. While the Greek forces headed by Leonidas I of Sparta displayed outstanding bravery and held out for three days against the Persian forces under Xerxes I, the Greek trader Ephialtes uncovered a secret passageway to the Persians, which allowed them to circumvent the Greeks and set off for Athens. However, before Xerxes arrived, most of the Athenians had deserted the city and fled to the nearby island of Salamis. Xerxes defeated a small contingent of Athenians who were still in the city and then burned it to the ground. The outcome of this victory saw the Persians achieve dominance over the whole of mainland Greece. Xerxes was persuaded to confront a Greek fleet in September 480 BC, this time taking place in the waters of the Strait of Salamis, just off the Greek coast. Artemisia of Halicarnassus, a Persian ally, warned against such an action. But Xerxes took Themistocles' advice. The latter was an Athenian general who had sided with the Persians. Themistocles noticed Xerxes' eagerness to conquer Greece and turned it to his advantage. Xerxes was keen for a decisive victory over the allied Greek fleet to accomplish his goals. This is when Themistocles came into play with his maneuver. The Greek leader sent his servant to update Xerxes on the alleged divisions between the Allied commanders and the Peloponnesians' intentions to evacuate that night. Themistocles then suggested that, to secure an easy victory, the Persians simply had to block the Strait of Salamis. This tactic had two objectives. First, it was designed to draw the Persian fleet into the strait, where the narrow gap would suit the Greeks' tactical abilities. Secondly, the report also stated that, should their allies be defeated, the Athenians would be prepared to surrender to Xerxes, thereby granting them some degree of mercy. Anxious to receive favorable news, Xerxes took the bait and commanded his fleet to blockade the Strait of Salamis. It turned out to be the perfect trap for the Persians, who were cornered in that tight spot while the Greeks used their superior tactics. Themistocles successfully drew the Persian navy into the Strait of Salamis, where the limited available room neutralized the Persian numerical advantage. Ta tactically skillful and with unshakable bravery, the Greeks imposed heavy casualties on the Persian fleet, ultimately forcing it to retreat. Having recognized this setback, Xerxes withdrew to Asia, bringing a large part of his army with him. Afraid that the Greeks would storm the bridges over the Hellespont, he made a strategic retreat. Xerxes returned to his capital Susa. His retreat did not spell the end of the Persian threat to Greece, as he left the invasion in the hands of his general and cousin Mardonius. The Persian foothold was still sound, notwithstanding the naval defeat, since much of Greece was still under Persian control and the colossal Persian land army stood undisturbed. Xerxes likely entertained the expectation that the Greek alliance, weak and divided between rivals such as Athens and Sparta, could collapse if they offered the right diplomatic conditions. Nevertheless, following a series of political talks, the Persians clearly could not achieve victory through diplomacy, and the conflict could only be solved through war. Mardonius's leadership was crucial at that critical juncture. He shouldered the responsibility of pushing on with the Persian campaign in Greece, attempting to turn the tide in their favor. Albeit against a Greek alliance bent on resisting the Persian invasion, Mardonius displayed great military and strategic skill in trying to achieve Xerxes' objectives. But the Greek tactical prowess outmatched the Persian forces in battle, and this sealed the doom of Xerxes' ambitions. Greece was ready to struggle to the very end to preserve its independence and identity. Following Mardonius's death, the remaining Persian troops experienced unsanitary conditions and starvation, causing diseases such as dysentery to spread, aggravating the soldiers' already despairing situation even further. When Xerxes finally crossed the Hellespont and arrived in Sardis, most of his army had been lost. His magnificent expedition had turned into a debacle, 
leaving him with only a shadow of the army that had once marched into Greece. The Greeks, led by Pausanias of Sparta, decided to counterattack a few years later to liberate the Greek settlements in Asia Minor, which were under Persian rule. Xerxes mobilized a new corps to confront the Greeks and protect his regional interests. In 466 BC, a Greek commander named Simon led an impressive comeback at the Battle of Eurymedon on the southern coast of Asia Minor. Simon and his troops defeated the Persians twice on the same day. First, they wrecked a Persian fleet that had been sent to intercept them, proving their prowess at sea. Then, Simon successfully led his Greek army against the Persian ground forces on the beach, albeit outnumbered. Simon's triumph at the Battle of Eurymedon was a landmark occasion, a turning point in Greek-Persian relations in the region. This string of Greek triumphs proved the Greeks' resilience and fighting ability, defying Persian influence and cementing the autonomy of the Greek colonies in Asia Minor. Xerxes' daring campaign came to a heartbreaking halt, ultimately sealing the fate of the Persian Empire in Greece. With no more prospects of expanding his empire, Xerxes opted to spend his time and resources on projects and monuments. He poured enormous amounts of money into even bigger constructions than those made by his father Darius. He also managed the roads throughout the empire, especially the Royal Road, used to send messages and goods. Xerxes also targeted the expansion of important cities, such as Susan and Persepolis. This did help to keep the empire running, even though it came at a great expense. Following the heavy toll of the Persian campaign in Greece, Xerxes imposed heavy taxes on his provinces and subjects to raise revenue for his projects. While this extensive taxation provided the necessary funds, it also had a profound impact on the empire's economy. Increased taxes and levies sparked unrest and bitterness among people throughout the empire. Grudgingly, the subjects, financially overburdened by the Persian incursion into Greece, and now saddled with additional taxes to support Xerxes' mammoth projects, were far from happy. This widespread malcontent may have contributed to the volatile political climate that led to Xerxes' assassination. A devastating event shook the Achaemenid Empire in August 465 BC, when Artabanus, the commander of the royal bodyguard and a prominent authority in the Persian court, conspired to assassinate the Persian king Xerxes. The Greek historian Aristotle claimed that Artabanus first executed Xerxes' son Darius and then the king. When Artaxerxes I, Xerxes' third son, found out about the murders of his father and brother, he executed Artabanus and his sons and took back the throne. Xerxes lived up to his cruel and slanderous reputation in Greece even after his death. Not surprisingly, Greek sources, especially Herodotus, painted Xerxes in an extremely negative way. This is a far cry from his predecessors Cyrus and Darius, who were often revered by Greek scholars. Over a century after Xerxes' death, Alexander the Great embarked on his campaign to conquer Persia. He had a specific revenge agenda in mind. Xerxes' sacking of Athens during the Greco-Persian Wars prompted Alexander to want revenge, and he took aim at Xerxes' palace and Persepolis as an act of vengeance. Xerxes thereby left a complex legacy as a tyrant king of the Achaemenid Empire. If you liked finding out more about the history of this Persian king, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.